I found true love and happiness. And I found the guy of my dreams. And you too can enjoy interracial splendor on the, the Mitzvah train. train. So why not climb aboard the Mitzvah train, the city's premier Afro-Judeo video dating service? <laughs> Bridge some of those cultural gaps while doing the wild thing. You'll find you have a lot more in common than you thought. Slavery, hard to manage hair, Sammy Davis Jr. Hey, maybe your grandfather was your date slumlord. Mine was. So why not give it a try? That's right. I didn't know a matzo ball from a basketball. <laughs> till I met Mitzi. Ahmad taught me the Roger Rabbit dance, and I was even able to try it out at a Cool Mo D concert. I love my Yiddish mama so much, I've had myself circumcised. Twice. And I'm thinking about going back for another cut. So come on down to Mitzvah Train. And remember, we're not only the owners of the Mitzvah Train, but we're, we're also, also clients. clients. It's really hot. I sure wish I could take a dip. Well, why don't you? Well, it's that time, and I'm not sure of my protection. Well, girlfriend, it's time you switch to a more absorbent brand. Here, try these. Vortex 2. I'm using them now. Hmm. absorbent. Greetings. I'm Margaret Lensford Hall, and this is my interpreter, Mr. Mobutu. I'm Margaret Lensford Hall. <laughs> President Bush has seen fit to appoint me ambassador to your little nation rather than sending me to Mallorca as I had expected. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to expect based on the briefing I received in Washington, but I find your little country really rather quaint in a third world sort of way. You say it on my secret little day to offer your country in terms of agricultural uh, assistance and hunger relief. <laughs> I, I'm very sorry that I don't speak your language, but Mr. Mobutu has been so kind as to teach me a phrase to close with. Um, uh, Dana hiku jumbaku bear booty bumbui bui bango bango. Ladies and gentlemen, the most controversial female comedian, Andrea Dice Clay. <laughs> yeah, you think that's easy to do when you're stacked like this? How the f 
What are you doing? How do you like my jacket, huh? Story of my life, I got more studs than I know what to do with. I'm telling you, guys can't get enough of me. They're always singing, Oh, baby, oh, baby, I love you. I need you. Bullsh**. Just give me the goods and get out of here. I'm through with you. doing this guy in my dressing room before I came out here tonight. He says to me, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> well, excuse the f*** out of me. All I says was, is that all there is, eh? These guys think they're built like Damn the Danis, you know what I mean? <laughs> like this <laughs> the other night. <laughs> he says to me, <laughs> He says to me, Let me know if I hurt you. <laughs> if you hurt me, I says the last time I saw something that looked like that, it had an eraser on the end of it. Andrea Dice Clay at the Desert Inn now through July 15th. If she doesn't cut them off, you'll laugh them off. For training men the Woodhouse way. Hello, I'm Barbara Woodhouse. You know, men are like dogs. They scratch, they chase tail, and they're always doing things like licking your face when you wish they'd just curl up and go to sleep at the foot of the bed. That's why I've taken the lessons I've learned from taming dogs and applied them to men. Because you know, if you train a man properly, you can keep him for a lifetime. Tonight, we have three couples who have volunteered to share their problems with us. And your name, dear, is... Alison. Hello, Alison. And your man's name is... Tom. Tom, what a good boy. Yes, you are. What a good boy. You have to encourage them, you see, dear. Now, tell us what your problem is. Well, the thing with Tom is every time we go out, Tom yes. will go through the door, yes. slam the door tightly behind him, and leave me standing out in the cold. Now, I've talked to him about it several times. And it hasn't worked, has it? Told you. No, no it, it seldom does. It seldom does work. Now, what sort of collar are you using there? Collar? Yes, well, judging from Tom's size and his temper, I would recommend a number seven Wilson adjustable spike. You see, what we're going to do is keep the lead straight up in the air. We jerk them and we love them. You see, we jerk them and we love them. Now, let's you and I go for a nice walk, shall we, Tom? Come now, walkies, walkies. That's right. There we go, right through the door. There we are, dear. Walkies. Tom, you're going through the door with a lady. You see? You're going through the door with a lady. Try it again, shall we? Walkies, walkies. Tom. <laughs> I said you're going through the door with a lady. Yes? Try it again, shall we? Walkies! Walkies! After you, ma'am. Now, why don't you hold the door open for me, Tom? Sure. There, Alison, you see how simple it is? Now, why don't you take Tom for a nice walk in the park? There you are, off you go, children. Walkies! Walkies! <laughs> has a common problem, haven't you, dear? Yes, my man leaves the toilet seat up. Oh, my, you're a naughty boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. Now, do you use a magazine or newspapers to uh, discipline your man? Well, well, nothing, really. I, I you know, I... I find that magazines have just a little more sting, <laughs> you know? A little more crispness. Now, let's you and I walk over here, dear. Yes, we're going to touch the toilet bowl. You didn't hit me with that magazine again. Oh, no, dear, I was just having a little fun. Hey, you know? Yes, now touch the bowl, it's not going to bite you. It's Cold. It certainly is. But we women have found that out the hard way, haven't we? Yes, we certainly have. All right, now, close your eyes and sit down. Piece of cake. That's right. There we go. And in we go. What's wrong with you? 
with you. Well, that's what happens to women when naughty men like you leave the seat up. We fall in, don't we? Now, in the future, you're going to put the toilet seat down, aren't you? Aren't you? Yes, you are, dear. Yes, you are. Now, off you go. Oh, dear, dear. Thank there you, you are. Thank you. Now, Karen here has the most difficult problem of all. Yeah, yeah, well, apparently no matter what I do, Harold can't seem to stop looking at other women. Oh, my goodness. That's the problem. Well, let us judge the severity of the problem thusly. Susan, would you walk through now, dear? <laughs> do you see what I mean? I most certainly do. You're a little rascal, aren't you? Yes, you are. You're a little rascal. Now, in a case like this, I normally prescribe a prosthetic cone-shaped collar which severely limits the movement of the neck. Say, 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 what the hell are you doing with? Now you'll be a good boy and I'll give you a biscuit. Would you get out of my face, you ugly heifer? Oh, my God. This won't do. This won't do. <laughs> what did you do? Now, don't, don't be alarmed, dear. I'm simply stunned here, you see. But you know, I would in future consider putting him to sleep. I believe he's got rabies. Yes. Well, you know, Karen, why don't you and I go down to the, how would you say, um, discotheque and find you another man, shall we? Wookies! Wookies! This has been Training Men, the Woodhouse Way. Hi, you must be Velma Mulholland. That's right, kid. Got a cigarette, Johnny? No, I don't smoke, sorry. Stick around, bright boy. I'll teach you a few things. Oh, really? Well, uh, listen. My name is actually Eddie. Eddie, Johnny, kid, bright boy. It's a big world out there. What's in a name? That's hip. Um, listen, my man Steve told me a lot about you. He said you're a party girl and you kind of old-fashioned. Lies, all lies, I tell you. Sure, maybe I hung around with the wrong crowd and skipped Sunday school, but I'm not all bad. No, he said good things about you. He said that, you know, besides you looking good, he said that, you know, you worked at the 5 and 10, got a job ski, and, um, you know, you like old movies. Sure, I see a picture show now and again. It helps to pass the time when your heart's been broken in so many pieces it feels as though you'll never see the light of day. Hey, uh, why don't we just talk all this over over dinner and some movies or something? Oh, Johnny, you're a sweet kid. Yeah? But don't you see it? It'd never work. I'm no good for you, Johnny. I'd be trouble from the word go. Hell, my middle name is trouble. But not you, Johnny. You've got a shot at something really big. You're going to make something of yourself. I'm going to be somebody? <laughs> Don't you see? We're from two different worlds. You're real top draw, head of the list, cream of the crop. I'm nothing but a washed-up has-been working in a dime dance saloon. Steve said you work at 510. Five and ten. Diamond dance. Can't you see, Johnny? I'm trying to knock some sense into that long head of yours. I'm no good for you. No good, I tell you. Oh, Johnny, you deserve that stone cottage with the white picket fence and the shady oak tree. If you stick around with me, kid, they'll ruin your life just like they've ruined mine. Hey, look, is it the black and white thing? <laughs> because you should have said that up front. All right, Johnny. You force me to say it. I hate you. I better get out of here, because you can't be hitting a brother like that. Johnny! Johnny! That's right, Johnny. Save yourself. Run just as fast as your legs will carry you. Run to the ends of the earth if you have to, only don't look back, because I won't be here. But I love you. You big palooka! For the land. You've seen her special version of the national anthem. Now hear other patriotic tunes butchered by your favorite slob, Roseanne Barr, in her new video album. See Roseanne as she scratches her crotch, or hawks a big loogie. She spits, she scratches, she belches. The 
way her singing stinks, you'll swear she's done something worse. But nothing could be worse than Roseanne Sings America. Sings America. It'll leave a lump in your throat, but not for very long. This month on HBO, she's loud, she's ugly, she wears an overcoat, and she's a screaming success. She's Samantha Kinnison. Yeah, it's great to be here tonight. Guess you can tell it's my anniversary. That's right. I've been married for five years. Do a f man! Ah! be bitter about it though i guess i just pictured marriage as being somewhat different you know i guess i just pictured something other than some lazy slob laying around reading playboys and drinking black label morning honey sure wish i could stick around waiting on you having fun your all day but one of us has got to earn a living ah, ah! <laughs> i tell you Maybe next time I'll consider marrying a little higher up on the food chain, like maybe an amoeba or something. <laughs> I'm not bitter, though. I don't love <laughs> man. I have always loved <laughs> man. I'll never forget the first time I fell in love. I was about 18 years old, you know. I'll never forget it. I was just waiting for the right man to come and sweep me right off my feet. Just sweep me off my feet, not use me like a f ride at Disney World! <laughs> but I still remember the first one. That's right. Wrote a little song about him. He looks something like you, sir, Mr. Smooth, down there in the front row. How you doing? I bet you've been in love, sir. I bet you've taken some young lady under your arm, sir. I bet you told her that you loved her and she believed you. Well, I'd like to sing a song to you right now that I wrote for my honey lamb, and it goes something like this. You f bastard! You broke my heart! Said you love me, you lying son of a bitch, you lame ass. I never felt your. I never felt your. You'll laugh, you'll gasp, you'll burn in hell. Samantha Kennison, this month on HBO. All you insomniacs and early risers. It's 4 a.m. and you know what that means. It's time for the Magenta Thompson Show. She lit up the silver screen and now she's going to light up your morning. Please welcome Magenta Thompson. Ow! Can we turn that music off, please? We're on. We're on. What? I said we're on. Don't point at me. That's so rude. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the Magenta Thompson Show. Uh, you know, I was going to do this uh, monologue, this opening monologue for you, but I can't really find it anywhere. So, um, you know, I guess I'll just show you a clip of my performance in Shaft. That was really the uh, <laughs> that was really the uh, role that launched my film career. Paul, do we still have that queued up from last night? Roll it. Get out of my way, bitch. Oh, yeah. I was really something in those days. You know, that blonde on Mod Squad never took a fall like that. You know, but I guess if you want a primetime TV show, all you gotta do is give a little something to Mr. Quincy. Ooh, I produce Michael Jackson albums, Jones. You know? One, one white, one black, and one incompetent little slut. That's what the show's motto should have been. What? Mr. Yeah. Yes, it's the Mr. Drippy Stop Smoking Kit. It's the only system that uses carbonated spring water. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Drippy, to the Magenta Thompson Sponsor family. Now, uh, let's bring on my first guest, another untalented blonde who uh, managed to land herself a primetime TV show for what reason we can't really be sure, Sarah Purcell. You're spitting on me. What? She won't. We got Pam Greer. Oh, who? 
Pam Greer. Pam Greer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pam Greer. Well, uh, let's welcome Pam Greer, shall we? Hi, Pam. Sit down. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you want some coffee? Uh, no. So, uh, Pam, you, uh, you, uh, starred in a number of, uh, films in the 70s, didn't you? Uh, Coffee and Foxy Brown, uh, Big Dollhouse, uh, Black Mama, White Mama. I think that was the one where you kept your shirt on, wasn't it? <laughs> well, anyway, I guess the, uh, I guess the question that I have for you tonight is, uh, um, wh why, why wasn't I in any of these films? Excuse me? Look, just don't bother. I guess I didn't sleep with the right people. Ha you I know, don't believe that when I... I starred in Superfly, you know, I got that role through my acting talent alone. There, there was no horizontal auditioning for this bit. You starred in Superfly? That's right. Here, let me show you what I mean. Paul, do we still have that queued up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. roll it, hon. Get out of my way, you bitch! Something that we used to call star quality, Pam. That's real acting. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, if you want to do that. Yeah, well, thanks. Pam, it's been, uh... What? What, are we landing a plane? You know, I, I played those games. I mean, I, I jumped on the casting couch once or twice. You know, I don't know what it got me. It got me the greatest role of my career. That's right. Mother Jugs and Speed. Roll it, Paul. Somebody get this bitch out of my way. Yes! Yes! You know, I can't believe that ended up on the cutting room floor. It really could have changed the whole course of my career. Yeah, well, that. all right, all right! I guess that does it for the Magenta Thompson show tonight. Thank you for joining us. Um, won't you uh, tune in tomorrow night when our special guest is Andy Davis from the Brady Bunch? Thanks. <laughs> Ma'am, do you know why I stopped you? Say, what is this, 20 questions? Uh, do you mind stepping out of the car? Not if you don't mind getting a look at a great set of gams. <laughs> Care for a smoke, or is that against the Boy Scout oath? Uh, may I see your license, please? So you want to play rough, do you? Sure, copper. I've got nothing to hide. Read it and wait. Uh, you're Velma Mulholland? Sure, I'm Velma. Sure as ten dimes will get you a dollar. Any more questions, Inspector, or may I be on my way? Is this your car? Sure, it's my car. You seen me driving it, ain't you? Can't a gal go out for a couple of yoo-hoos and a cardinal luckies without bringing in the feds? <laughs> oh, look, lady, this is merely a technicality. See, I wasn't suggesting that you've done anything. I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. All right, you dirty screw, I'll sing. I'll sing like a canary. I was born in Flatbush, Brooklyn, to a couple of sweet folks whose only fault was they were poor as church mice. I left home when I was five, and I've worked my fingers to the bone ever since to try to make something of myself. I've slung hash in every greasy spoon from here to Kalamazoo. I may not be the brightest dame in town, but I've got a heart of gold. And if that's a crime, well, then slap those steel bracelets on me and throw me in the slammer. Throw me in the slammer, copper, that's what you've got to do. Get the log and shovel, and it's all there in black and white. Say, 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 say. Watch it with the fist, Jaja. <laughs> Choco, look, I only stopped you because your left tail light is out. Oh, sure, Flatfoot. Lights out, jigs up, bases loaded, gooses cooked. I've heard it all, copy. You hear me? I've heard it all. Just take me away, will you? Take me away, you'll get your lousy promotion. I only hope you can live with yourself. 
this is just a summons. It's not a subpoena. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And frankly, I don't think you do either. But there's a diner up the road. And I think you should go up there and have a cup of coffee and cool out. And fix that damn tail light. What's the matter, copper? Too much woman for you. Too close to the flame, too hot to handle. Well, I've heard that one before. You're not the first, and with any luck, you won't be the last. So long, sucker. Just like the films Cry Freedom and A World Apart, this is a story about the anguish and upheaval of black South Africa. I can remember it as if it happened yesterday. The day they bulldozed down my maid servant's shack, destroyed all of her property, and separated her from her children. And all of this on a night that I had planned a formal dinner for 30. Oh, how I cried. How many girls would I have to interview before I'd find another Jacinta? And as they took Jacinta away, kicking and struggling, I felt as if the police were pulling me away, kicking and struggling. I had to do something. So I cried, and I took a picture from my little scrapbook of anguish. After the police had gone, I noticed that they had trampled over a bed of geraniums that I had been pruning since I was a child. I looked down at those flowers, and I saw the pain of black South Africa in all of those broken stems and wounded petals. I wept until I realized they were perennials and would be back again next summer. Yes, with Jacinta gone, life just wasn't the same in Johannesburg. Oh, didn't I mention that I wept? And as the condition of my household deteriorated without Jacinta, I began to understand what it must be like to live in a black South African relocation camp. Next, as I attempted to polish my own silver, my arms began to ache and I could feel what it must be like to toil long, arduous hours in the white South African diamond mines. It was at this point that I decided that Jacinta simply had to be liberated before my entire household rotted from within, the same way minority rule was rotting my continent. No one could stop me now. I would write a letter to President de Klerk. So I wrote and I cried. And I cried, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I cried. Who knows? One day, I may even mail it. My Dark Conscience. A true story about the pain of watching somebody else suffer, and wanting to do something about it, but not really wanting to get involved, and then feeling a little guilty about it. Sort of. My Dark Conscience. A film that could well be coming to a theater near you. Told you, we were back in two and two. Welcome back to Love Connection. If I'm not Chuck Woolery, why am I sleeping with his wife? <laughs> Let's meet our next couple back to tell us how their date went. She's a controversial comedian who knows what she wants from a guy. Andrea Dice Clay. Hi, Andrea. Yeah, kiss, kiss. Hey, Chuck, I uh, made a little rhyme for you backstage. It goes something mm -hmm. like this. Chuck, Chuck, Bo Buck, Banana, Fan, of Okay. Bo he considers himself a sensitive guy and a man who treats his date like a lady, even though he's a major movie star. Say hello to Patrick Swayze. I just want to say that I watch your show often and, well, I love you, man. Well, that's great, Patrick. Andrea might be a little more receptive to that love, however. What about it, Andrea? Chuck, you know something? I'm not looking for love. You know, just and get the out of my face. See? Now, it's that very attitude that made our date such a disaster, Chuck. What disaster? I thought it went pretty good. I mean, we both finished. Help! How did the date begin, Pat? 
I wanted to take her dancing. I like to think of myself as a pretty good dancer. Mm -hmm. I was the star of Dirty Dancing. Yeah. You call that dancing? In that case, my dog does plenty of dancing with my couch pillows. Only he's got a. You know what I'm saying? See what I mean, Chuck? She's an animal. Oh, stop huh? your whining and complaining. I'm the one with the carpet burns on. For crying out loud. She's got a point there, Pat. Hey, I got two of them, Chucky. I seen you looking. What? Maybe we should turn up the heat in the studio. <laughs> Chuck, I'm into martial arts. I've got an incredible body. Mm -hmm. I'm practically a god with these streaks and tips in my hair. Yeah. But I'm also sensitive. Mm. I only wanted to show Miss Clay the finer points of the city. Oh, come on. I showed you places on your ceiling you ain't ever seen. Oh. Well, it looks like Andrea wanted Patrick to live up to his screen image, while Patrick obviously expected to date within his own species. I'm killing myself. Let's see who our audience picked for Andrea. Was it Patrick? Pete Townsend? Or Grace Jones? Well, the audience still picked Patrick, so if you two'd like to go out again, we'll pay for it. Sure, what the hell? I'll do honey buns again if he'll cut his hair in a flat top so I got some place to set my drink when <laughs> You know what I'm saying? What? Looks like it's up to you, Patrick. Do you want to go out with Henry again? My mama didn't raise no quitter, Chuck. Well, there you have it. See you next week. In the meantime, may all your dates be major and your carpet burns be minor. Harvey Corman, well, whoever. He said, some people were born to act, some people learn to act, and then there are people like you. God, I was touched by that. The point is, I took those words to heart, and it wasn't long after that that I landed my breakthrough role in Friday the 13th. Let's take a look at my performance, shall we? Thanks, thank you. Thanks a lot. But you know, that took more than talent. That's a little something called skill. That's technique. You're down on the knee, and you're over at the throwback of the shoulder, and you're looking, and it's a single tear, and we're out. Okay, let's try some simple exercises, shall we? Up on your feet, come on. Line up. 
Okay. We're hailing a cab. Come on, people. You want that taxi? It's ringing out. Yes. All right, dialing a phone. Rotary. Yeah. Okay, push button. All right, all right. Calling the elevator. I didn't say up or down, did I? Let's be specific, people. That is the key. Uh, spray and wipe. Yeah. What? Bernie swore to me I'd get that roll. The only thing on the shot was my hand. What do you mean I look bitter? Look, how many ways are there to stir dog food? I, I want to talk to Bernie. Are you going to be off the phone soon? Because we Look, you're going to get your $15 worth. But why don't you show him that clip of me in the movie of the week? The, uh, the love scene. Okay. Yeah. He's in a meeting with who? Joanne Worley. Oh, my. I bet she's a hot property now, huh? Out of my way, bitch. I'm calling back in 20 minutes, and Bernie better take my call. Hello? Hello? All right, this isn't a coffee break, people. Up on your feet. Okay, we're gonna drill these brush backs. Now let's go. Concentrate, concentrate. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Oh, no, no, you people are pathetic. Let's do it one couple at a time. You and you. The rest of you, sit down. Focus. Out of my way, bitch. You call that a fall, princess? You better stay right there on the floor, because that's the only way you're going to get a roll. Let's do our homework, shall we? Who is this woman? Uh, uh, she's somebody I just got out of my way. Yes, of course, on the surface. But who is she really? I mean, what's her moment before? What makes her tick? How does she feel about being pushed out of the way by this guy? about being treated like something he stepped in after she took him into her apartment, into her bed. And what did he leave her? Nothing but that cold sore that took me two weeks at the free clinic just to get rid of. Uh, look, obviously we're just not ready for this sort of intensive work right now. Let's move on to something simpler, shall we? Uh, I'm sorry, Magenta, but I have to go now. You have to go now? Mm-hmm. This is only the most important class of your career. What, have you got a hot date? Uh, no, actually, I have an acting job. Oh, she's got an acting job. Tina Louise has an acting job. What sort of job could you get? Well, it's not much. All I have to do is stir a bowl of dog food. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. How did you get that part? You must have put out for the director. Get out of my way, bitch. Oh. <laughs> see? Now, see, I'm just acting. That's what I was talking about, the technique. That's what Archie Corman was talking about. Or was it, uh, Chad Everett? Oh, oh. Who, who played Mannix? Uh, Calvin Lockhart. No. Uh, uh, class dismissed. Uh, excuse me, what are your specials? Um, today's specials are uh, meatloaf with mashed potatoes and brown gravy, whitefish with tater tots and navy bean soup. Thanks. No problem, hon. Hey, you have any ketchup? Absolutely. Thank you. How do I get to the bathroom? Uh, here's what you want to do, hon. You go down the hall, pass the telephone booth on your right. It's on your left-hand side. You can't miss it. Hey, Lizzie, I need a 12-letter Latin phrase when I came, I saw, I conquered. Huh. Try Vinnie Vidi Vici. That ought to work. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. What's the proper penance for stealing? That's two Our Fathers and a Hail Mary. <laughs> hey, Lizzie, here's, here's one. This man, along with Michael Wonder Mike Wright and Guy, Master G. O'Brien, made up the original Sugar Hill Gang. Oh! Who is Henry Big Bank Hank Jackson? <laughs> this is impossible. Ah, uh, give me that. There you go, hon. Oh, I should see, I see that. Lizzie, this physics is driving me crazy. Do you know what the conservation of energy law is? What, do I look like a rocket scientist? No, oh, I just figured, you know... No, nah, I'm just kidding. Try, try a one-half mass times velocity squared equals mass times gravity times height. Hey. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? As much wood as a woodchuck could if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Huh. What is a horse not a horse? When he's a famous Mr. Red. Uh, <laughs> hey, can you do the running, man? Absolutely. 
Go Lizzie! Go Lizzie! Of a number between one and one thousand. Hey, are those bugle boy jeans you win? Nihon go wakarimasu ka? I got you, okay? I think that's uh, 56. <laughs> Why, yes, they are. And, uh, hey, Nihon go wakarimasu. Hey! All right, buddy! Freeze! I want you to take all your money, put it on the table, hey, hey, I'm gonna hey, bust hey. a cap in this old white heifer's behind! Hey, 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 hey. You're not gonna shoot anybody, are you? <laughs> No, you're not going to shoot anybody. You think I'm kidding? This ain't no joke, baby! Look at the way his hand is shaking. It's obvious that this is a subconscious attempt to get love from your father. You were abused as a child. It's as simple as that. You're a scared little rabbit. You just need a big bear hug. You want to hurt us? You're the one who's hurting inside, mister. That's right. You ready? Give me a hug. All right. All right. What are you so nervous about? It wasn't even a real gun. What? I'm just kidding. It was a 45 semi-automatic 14 clip. You could have blown the hell out of all of us. Oh. Hey, can I help you? Hiya, Johnny. Uh, the name's Jimmy. Jimmy, Johnny, Joey. What's in a name? Anyway, give me a double dip, black and white. And... Hey, Johnny. Don't forget the cherry. <laughs> Name's Jimmy. Sure got strong arms, Johnny. I bet no one pushes you around. No. Nope. Sure don't. All right. Sprinkles on there. Ta da. Cherry, have you a dollar? A dollar? Well, I thought it would cost a quarter. Oh, fiddlesticks, I just spent my last buck at the picture show. All right, I'll tell you what, just give me the quarter. Bring the rest when you come back, okay? Oh, Johnny, you're the greatest. I was nothing, a nobody, a bum in the street, but you came along and picked me up, dusted me off, and turned me into something special. I'm yours, Johnny, forever. <laughs> Look, lady, thanks a lot, all right? Just um, enjoy your ice cream, bring me my change when you can, all right? Oh, Johnny, I could never repay you. Not after what you've done for me. Oh, Johnny, the two of us will be great together. We'll be thick as thieves, like birds of a feather, two peas in a pod. You'll board the next train to Niagara. Train to Niagara? A train to Niagara, slow boat to China. Oh, Johnny, I'd go to hell in a handbasket with you. Look, lady, that's enough. Hey, yo, yo, Larry! Larry! I'm gonna take my break now, man. I'm out of here. Lady, there's help around. Seek it. Wait! Johnny! Don't go. I've got the double dip blues. It really makes no difference which comb I choose. Please hold the sprinkles. You see, I don't think I'll ever, ever lose this double dip of rock and roll blues. I had a fat long, sweeter than jello. Over the news I'm hoping that one day I'll make a new Sunday Set them up spoons for two Until then I'll be double dip blue So long, Johnny See you in my dreams They're malnourished, homeless, their young lives slowly wasting away. Hello, I'm Sally Struthers, and each year we lose another handful of America's most valuable commodity, child TV stars. Imagine yourself a child on a hit TV series. You reach puberty, your show is canceled, and your parents have spent all of your money. God! The stench of failure is sickening. You turn into a gun nut, make bad career choices. 
drug addiction, attempted murder, even transvestite bashing. All hope is lost. But now, thanks to you, there's hope. For just 75 cents a day, <laughs> the price of a cup of coffee, the Adopt-A-TV Child Foundation helps get these kids back on track. What happens to your 75 cents? It helps to put your TV child back in the environment he's familiar with so he can cope with his failure. It pays for acting lessons to help prepare for 20-year reunion specials, plus lawyer's fees, talk show transportation, and, of course, bail if necessary. Most important, it keeps your child comfortable and happy. Hi. I'm Danny Bonaducci. <coughs> I used to be into transvestite prostitutes. Now, with the help of Adopt a TV Child Foundation, I'm into straight prostitutes. Thanks. Thank you, Danny. With a small donation, you'll be able to watch your TV child grow strong and healthy. Who knows? They may even land another TV series. <laughs> So what are you waiting for? Send in your 75 cents and adopt a TV child today. Just call 1-5-5-5-has-been. Do it now. Gee, Mom, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, if I wore a dress once in a while or wore a little makeup, I'm sure I would feel a little more like a lady. Gosh, Mother, you know... Feminine advice coming from you means so much to me, considering that you're about as feminine as road, Jill! You can pass me in a juncture and left me for dead! You're a she bitch from hell! Ha, 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 ha. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, he's home. Uh, I'll talk to you later, Mom. Bye. Honey! Yeah. I'm home. Anniversary, pumpkin face. I don't believe it. You remembered even after three months of rehab. Rehab? Hey, how about a drink? <laughs> sure thing, sweet cakes. Why don't you take your coat off and sit down? I'll just go get dinner. Okay, but hurry up, honey, because I've got a gifty boo. <laughs> Here we go, Sam. Happy anniversary. Uh, isn't that nice? A TV dinner. That's just one. Because, you know, when I was in Betty Ford, I was so whacked out of my mind, I didn't even know what you cooked for me. But here I am, clean and sober, come home, starving, dying neat, and what do you serve me? A goddamn TV dinner! Sandwich Mary came from a dead cow and died six years ago! Oh, happy anniversary. Here's the five years of living hell! You know what? I'm putting my hand in my pants and I'm looking for your present. Uh oh, you're gonna have to I found it! I found it! Yeah, I didn't think you got me anything, Sam! Well. Oh, isn't this sweet? Oh. It's birth control pills. That, isn't that charming? Birth control. I was expecting maybe a necklace or a bracelet. My birth control. You got me birth control. Well, I guess this means that we can have sex more than once a year. <laughs> Oh, 
Did we wake up our neighbor, Joan Rivers? Oh, uh, we're sorry. Were we keeping you up, Joan? Yeah, don't we? We didn't disturb your beauty sleep. We know how desperately you need it. See, now you look like a baboon. You'll never be from the You're going to the elephant woman, the elephant woman. Oh, don't make it go away. I'm turning to stop. I'm turning to stop. Baby. Oh, did mommy and daddy disturb your sleep, little muffin? Oh, uh, do we interrupt your dream? Because you've been our nightmare, you little bastard! We just fucked you in the first place! You were an accident! You were an accident! You're only here because I was so up, I didn't know where I stuck my <laughs> isn't that bad. Have you rented it yet? Why, no, we haven't. Please feel free to take a look around. Of course, I will mention that there's an application and you'll be required to list your employer. <laughs> That's no problem. I have a job. Well, of course you do. Now, what team do you play for? <laughs> I'm a doctor. You're not Dr. J, are you? I've heard you're quite talented. Lady, I'm a medical doctor. Well, good for you. Now, you must have studied very hard. Let me tell you a little bit about the apartment, shall I? Firstly, this locale is ideal for you. There is a golden bird fried chicken right down on the corner. And you know something? There is a crack house over on 7th. I tell you, people are getting beat up and shot there all the time. And what with you being a doctor and all, your business could be booming. Of course, I can't guarantee that the corner store would carry that Afro Sheen activist stuff. They're Mexican, you know. They have plenty of those tortillas, and the rest of us just have to make do. <laughs> Lady, I'm going to have a look around by myself. Oh, please do. You know, there is plenty you can do with this space. You can put your big stereo there in the corner and play that rap music just as loud as you like. Listen to me. You go ahead and look all you want. Are you still showing the apartment? We certainly are. Hello, how are you? I'm Sheila Peace. I must say, you speak English very well. Please feel free to have a look around. Hey, this isn't bad, honey. Yeah, but I'm not sure I like the neighborhood. Well, let me just say this about that. This neighborhood is conveniently close to everything you need. Why, Chinatown is just ten blocks away. That was a good movie, wasn't it? Chinatown? Of course, there weren't a lot of Chinese people in it. That must have chapped your high. 
course, now you people are buying up Hollywood. You'll show them, huh? Hey, we're Korean. Oh, well, then this apartment is just perfect for you. Here you are on the first floor. You won't disturb anyone down below with that karate stuff. And there's a photo mat right across the street. You know, we are one of the few buildings in the area that features speed bumps in the parking garage. Can I get you an application? Oh, no, I think we're looking for something a little bigger. Oh, well, of course you are. What with that whole boat people situation? <laughs> well, the thought of that brings tears to my eyes. I'm sure you guys have relatives coming in all the time. <laughs> Listen, good luck to you. It's just as well, really. You know, that rice that they cook sticks to the garbage disposal. It takes forever to get it out. Oh, would you listen to me? I haven't even introduced myself. Hi, I'm Sheila Pease. Hi, how are you? Aren't you adorable? I bet when you grow up, you want to manage a 7-Eleven just like your father. <laughs> You'll get all the big gulps you want, won't you? Come on, son. We're going to look around some. Well, hello again there, doctor. Have you decided you'd like an application? No, lady. I would never rent an apartment from you. Well, my goodness, you do drive a hard bargain. Okay, then I'll put up a hoop in the backyard. <laughs> oh, and you can barbecue all you please. Lady, you are sick. I am. My goodness, I feel all right. Well, you're the doctor. Good luck. Excuse me. Have um, you had a good chance to look around? You know, this place really is perfect for you. There's plenty of room for all of your wives to belly dance. <laughs> Plus, you know, the bedroom window faces Mecca. <laughs> you know, if you don't like the bare floors, you can put a magic carpet down. Hi, I'm Kathy Lee Gifford. You know, if you're a busy person like me, you'd love that deep, dark Santra Pay tan, but you just don't have the three to four weeks to lie in the sun and get it. Well, here's the good news. Now nature's loss is your gain at Fast Tanning Club Ozone. But <laughs> if my friends could see me now. Of course, my friends probably can't see me because their retinas have been burned to a crisp. We've peeled back the Earth's stratosphere here at Club Ozone so you can get the deep, dark tan you want in just 15 minutes. And our patented plumpers tell you when you're done. Our special aerosol tanning oil not only burns you to the bone, but also helps burn away that unwanted ozone layer. Oops, looks like this one got a little overdone. <laughs> Hi, I'm a busy executive. You know, in just 15 minutes at Club Ozone, I got such a deep, deep tan that when I went home, I got pulled over by the police twice and the bank even recalled my loan. And it's my bank. Now that's what I call a tan. <laughs> Club Ozone, we're your fast tanning vacation spot. Club Ozone, expanding soon to a location near you. Hello. Hi. Uh... I'm entertaining upstairs, and I ran out of coffee. Well, it just happens I've got a pot brewing right now. Why don't you come in and have some? Thank you. I hope Tester's Choice will do. Tester's Choice? Mmm, so smooth. Is it hot enough for you? Hot and creamy. Just the way I like it. Can I have another cup? <laughs> You said that three cups ago. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about my guests. They'll be wondering where I've been. Well, don't you want another cup? No, I really have to go. Thank you. Hello, Dan. Hi. 
Can I come in? I brought some coffee. Not now. We're having company. Oh, I see. You just drop by and drink my coffee and then toss me aside like so many used grounds? You've got responsibilities, Dan. What are you talking about? You, me, my apartment? Or were you just some neighbor stopping by to borrow coffee? Exactly. I won't be ignored! Maybe you should try the decaf. Excuse me. Is this some crazy? <laughs> okay. Coffee so good, it can't be ignored. Good morning, honey. It will be as soon as I have some tester's choice. Did I hear someone say tester's choice? <laughs> Tester's Choice, the taste that just won't go away. They neglected, they're unwanted, they're young, and, you know, they're available. Hi, I, I'm Woody Allen. <laughs> just $40 a month, you know, the, which is, you find you a, a lot less than the cost of your know, one hour of analysis. <laughs> you, know, you could not only you know, feed one of these, these gorgeous, delicious Asian girls, but you, you, know, you, you could also... Date one. <laughs> you believe me? You know they, they don't have they don't have homes. You know they, they don't have clothes. You know, they, they don't even have uh, your breasts yet. <clears throat> but, you, you know, just just think of it as an investment for your future. You know, just 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 look at the difference you can make. You know, uh, uh, right here. You know, 15 years ago, this girl was just a tiny orphan living in utter squalor. But you know, just ooh, just look at her now. Ooh, me so hungry. <laughs> Guess who? Papa Lee! <laughs> yes, dear Papa, you know, just, uh, you know, don't, don't uh, you say anything. <clears throat> uh, you know, I believe it was Sigmund Freud who, uh, who once said that, you know, a girl's first love is her father. <laughs> you know, if I could just interject right here, you know, at this juncture, it was a lot easier at that point to you know, sneak into a seedy motel under an assumed name. <laughs> You know, I, I don't think I'm being facetious, you're really even didactic when I say, you know, it's not everyone who's got a wife you know, naive enough to you know, bring one of these nubile young goddesses home with her, you know. But, you know, hey, look what it's done for me. You know, when it comes to women, I've always been a total loser. You know, when I was, when I was breastfeeding, I remember my mother, she said to me, you know, I kind of like to get to know you better. <laughs> but you know, the real beauty of this offer is it's, it's totally tax deductible. <laughs> you know, so please call 1-300-DATE-THE-CHILDREN. <laughs> and and you, if, if a woman named Mia answers the phone, you just hang up and try after 11. You know, her medication will have kicked in by then. <laughs> Go connect. Uh, yeah, that's Nix, my little blossom, the, the New York Nix. Date the children when a million dollars in therapy just isn't enough. applause there. Uh, gets me real excited. Makes me so excited my voice goes real high. <laughs> you know, tonight we have a really similar show for you, but why don't we start out by introducing you to Bradford Marcellus and the Tonight Show Band. <laughs> Let's get right to the news. Here's some of the headlines that are happening around our country. People are sending them to us. First headline, crazed gunman mows down 15 in post office. <laughs> Aren't these people taking this Elvis stamp thing a little too seriously? <laughs> All right. Second headline says bank robbed, four security guards killed. And well worth the 335 an hour, I must say. <laughs> 
Anyway, let's get started. My first guest is the first bald person to win a Grammy since Isaac Hayes. Please welcome Sinead O'Connor. Come on out here, Sinead. rise for the singing of our national anthem, huh? Didn't you? Okay. That's good. You can take a joke like that. I guess uh, it's good to see you again. I guess the lesson for the uh, young girls out here is that uh, you should never use the drive through window at Supercuts. It's very funny, Mr. Leno, make your jokes. But I'm not a girl, you know, I'm a woman. This is just a sort of sexist attitude I dealt with all my life. Even in my own homeland of Ireland, where a grown woman is called a lassie. Lassie, huh? You look more like a Mexican alias to me, <laughs> Uncle Fester. You know, make your little jokes, Mr. Leno. But I'm not here on your show to promote my career. This is capitalist business, that's what this is. This is the Prime Minister of Norway. Her country allows the killing of thousands of whales. You know, I went whale watching once. I heard the captain yell, there she blows, and I thought somebody had spotted Madonna. Now, what has this cute little guy done to deplete whatever? Nothing, but I just find him really irritated. Well, I one for you, Mrs. Clean. Yeah, this one up. No. Our senior is a fine man and very politically correct. You know, when we were dating, dating. you would often say to Dating? Me, you were dating our senior home? Yes, what of it? You have fallen from grace. You are no longer invited on this show. You have slept with the anti-host. <laughs> if she and Arsenio had a kid with her bald head and his triangle head, he'd come out looking like a yield sign with a nose ring. Like this. That is it. I'm leaving. Fight the real enemy. Yeah, why don't you go join a karate class? See if they can snatch the pebble from your hand, huh? Okay, we're going to take a short commercial break here and be right back. Hey, hold on. Hold on here. Wait a second. What happened to Branford and the band? Oh, snap. They had to run off early. They had to do the Arsenio Hall show. <laughs> well, that's it. They're banned. They're banned. The band is banned. I don't care. I don't need them anyway. I don't. As long as I still have my audience, right? <laughs> well, I say if you can't beat them, you might as well get busy with some of that Dorito eating, controversy ducking, motorcycle riding, producer firing, Johnny should have stayed funk. Ah! Coming soon to a theater near you, that big mouth, bigoted owner of the Cincinnati Reds in her first major motion picture, Driving Miss Shaw. You know, Hulk, I don't understand why I gotta go to this damn hearing anyway. <laughs> well, I be say it cause of your racial hiring practices, Miss Mayor. Why, that's just insane. If anything, I discriminate in favor of the black man. Uh, uh, Miss Mayor? Like when I hired you, I said I need a driver and he better damn well be black. The blacker, the better. Well, thank you, Miss Mayor. <laughs> Not at all. You know, Hulk, did you know that I am so sympathetic to the black man I've even taken a slave name? And what's that now, ma'am? Master. <laughs> Just a little joke, Hulk. Oh, look here. Don't get nothing on you now, Miss Mayor. <laughs> but, you know, I wouldn't recommend you say them type of thing when you go for that hearing today. Because that's what got you in trouble in the first place. And the press might not take kindly to it. Oh, the press. They're just a bunch of liberal Jews. 
They're the ones who made me shorten the team name to the Reds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, what, 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 what did the name used to be, Miss Ma'am? The Colorettes. Oh. Get it? The Colorettes. Oh, you ain't got to tell me. That was just a little more fitting, don't you think? You know, Hulk, speaking of Jews, have you heard the one about the new Jewish sports car? Oh, uh, ma'am? It stops on a dime. Even picks it up. Oh, <laughs> oh hurry up now, Miss Shot. I'm killing myself. Oh, you're killing me, too. <laughs> you know, Hulk, if you don't drive this car better, I'm going to trade you to the Jets along with those other uppity millionaires. Now, ma'am, you starting to work Hulk's last good nerve. Now, you shouldn't say such things. I'll say what I want. You're driving like an idiot. I can drive better from back here. Now, Miss Shot, that's the first sensible thing you done said all day. I got to go make one. What? Ah! Ah! Don't miss driving with Shot. Because sometimes what you say can drive you over the edge. Say, nice legs. Thanks. Some people were born with great legs, others with great minds. I wasn't born with either, so I decided to work on my legs. I used to do aerobics till I dropped. Then I discovered Thigh Master. Every single time you squeeze the Thigh Master, it strengthens and tones just where you need it. And if you do it for long enough, you start to feel all tingly. <laughs> But best of all, when your workout's over, Thigh Master folds for convenient storage. <laughs> but here's where the fun really begins. With your new in-shape thighs, you can do things you never thought possible. Like recycling. <laughs> and for you health nuts out there, your in-shape thighs are great for juicing. <laughs> so squeeze yourself into a happier, healthier you. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> Thanks, Thigh Master. Order yours today and get Suzanne's Butt Buster absolutely free. <laughs> That's like really, really unfair. And you can't turn to adults because, let's face it, sometimes they just don't get it. I mean, who's the future of this country? Us, right? And things will be different when we're running the show. But for now, MTV, the coolest network on the planet, has established this form. MTV's Team Cool. Okay, hey, um, shut up. Okay, um, okay, everybody sit down. Uh... Um, hi. Um, I read your complaints, and I know you've been sworn in and everything, but uh, I haven't eaten anything today except Milk Duds and Slim Fast. I'm feeling kind of dizzy, so if you could just tell me again what your problem well, is. Well, if it please the court, Your Honor, you know the supermodel Naomi Campbell? Well, yeah. Well, Kenny here says that she had a major boob job, but I say that she's all natural. I'm telling you, man, God doesn't make anything that sweet. Hey, man, wait a minute, man, did you see the George Michael video? I mean, man, she had those, like, liquid-like texture. Man, you can't get that from silicone. Yeah, how would you know? Hey, well, look who's talking, man. Last time you had breasts, man, it had Kentucky Fried Chicken written on the side of it. Um, excuse me, but, uh, what exactly am I supposed to do about this issue? Well, we were just thinking that maybe, you know, you could get maybe Naomi Campbell to come down here. Maybe we could... You two are total jerks. I hereby sentence you to two months hard labor after school at that Long John Silver's on Ventura Boulevard. Next case. Hi. What's your problem? He asked me out and he's really lame. No, duh. Tell me something I don't know. Um, he's really, really lame. Your Honor, I request that that remark be stricken for the record on the grounds that I love her unconditionally oh until my the God, end of you all. You really are lame. <laughs> Citing the precedent of Brady Bunch episode number 74, Marsha versus the Secret Admirer, I rule for the plaintiff. Um, 
We're about to win when Peter hits Marsha in the nose with a football and it swells up all huge and she misses the dance. What about it? I like that one. I like that one too. <laughs> oh my nose. Oh my nose. Yeah, on it. I hereby submit Star Trek episode number 18, Doomsday Machine, where the omnipotent big came down geek, from the... Geek, geek. Uh, I'm going to have to impose on you that thing where you can't, like, go within 50 feet of anyone breathing. Have you spared you, Gordon? Yeah, that's right, Booger Bob. And I also find you guilty of ultra grossness and sentence you to go to a dermatologist and wipe your nose. Motion for a peer. Yeah, right. Hold your breath. Court is adjourned. I gotta get this robe off. It's making me break out in the hives. Well, that brings to the close the case of the lamest geek in the galaxy. Here comes the defendant now. Dude, you must feel like quite a loser. Be me up, Scott. It is their intelligent life down here. Oh, lame, 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 lame. Well, be sure to tune in next time. And always remember, everyone's entitled to a fair trial. This is America, right? So don't settle things in the jam during recess. Take a team court. Oh, oh my, good morning. Let me just get myself organized here. Okay, well... <clears throat> Who is next, please? Hello there, sir. How are you? Fine, how are you? <clears throat> Let me guess. You're an American Indian, aren't you? Uh, Native American. Oh, Native American, that's right. Oh, for heaven's sakes, politically correct. You know, between the uh, coloreds wanting to be called Afro-Americans, and don't even try to explain to me the difference between the Asians and the Orientals. I know one of them's a rug. <laughs> but listen, how can I help you... Did you hear what I said? How can I help you? <laughs> uh, I... Oh, I slay myself. Well, I'm new in town and uh, looking for a job. Well, of course you are. Now, how long have you been off the reservation? Listen, I know how traumatizing it can be to be in an urban dwelling for the first time. I do know something of your pain, you know. Just the other night, I rented Dances with Wolves. Look, I, I need a job today if you, if you got one. Oh, well, of course. Uh... We'll fill out an application. Now, I'm sorry. What was your name? What, what, what is it that you do with wolves? <laughs> never mind. I'll, I'll come back tomorrow, okay? Well, all right, but you're never going to get anywhere with that kind of attitude. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes, would you look at you, you jolly old elf. I could have used you back in December, what with all of the calls I was getting for department store Santas. I <laughs> just would never believe it. Well, for heaven's sake. Uh, who's next, please? I am. Hello there, dear. I'm Sheila P. Hello. Um, I'm looking for a job, but in the meantime, I'd like to collect unemployment. Oh, well, of course. Now, you will um, have to fill out an application. All right. Here we are. Now, <clears throat> what was your name before you uh, embraced the ways of Mohammed or whatever you say? I mean, listen to me. I would put down XYZ or whatever chromosome you want, but the folks upstairs wouldn't be too thrilled if you know what I mean. You know, I can really respect your whole denouncing of Whitey, but... Uh, well, let's just focus on getting you a job, shall we? Can I fill out the application by myself, please? Oh, no, I'm afraid it would be much, much better if I helped you fill it out. Now, uh, were you uh, laid off? Yes, I was. Well, of course you were. I figured as much. Listen, can I be a friend? If you would just run a comb through that hair of yours, your phone would be ringing off the walls. You could have any job you wanted. Can anyone else help me? For heaven's sakes. Oh, um, pardone, amigo, but these cardos are not written in Espancholo. We bien? That's okay, lady. I can read them. Oh, of course you can. Are there Very any... good. <laughs> Are there any listings for any part-time work? Oh, now, for heaven's sakes, what kind of attitude is that? You're never going to get ahead that way. Why don't you try something full-time? <laughs> now, lady, I have another job. I work in produce. Oh, well, now, of course you do. 
But I have to confess to you, I think that kind of work is extremely dangerous. Dangerous? What are you talking about? I don't understand how it is that you avoid getting hit by a car selling those oranges right off the freeway ramp. I mean, for heaven's sakes, but well. Of course, what's a little Toyota to you and your dad and bulls all day long? Oh, wait! Can I talk to your manager? You know, just when you said that, you sounded like that what's-his-name. Oh, God, don't tell me. You look just like him, that uh, Eugene uh, nearly almost, what's his name? <laughs> That's the woman I want to file a complaint against. She insulted me. What? If I owned the Mini Mart, I would not need a job. This dot has nothing to do with laser tag. <laughs> Sheila, I've warned you before. I'll have to talk to you in my office. Well, now, there must be some sort of misunderstanding, sir. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> I know. Tell your story, walking pal, or I'll have the hotel dick up here so quick you Hey, look here, look at baby. You better chill, all right? You better chill. Cause I will I I'll baby, I will brush you to death. Baby? Why no sentimental sap on earth would call me baby except one person alone. Johnny. He sent you, didn't he? Oh, of course I should have realized. Oh, what did he say? Tell me everything. I want to hear every word. Uh, he said. For you not to call the police, no matter what you do. And just forget this ever happened. Oh, nuts. I could never forget Johnny. Why, I'm the only one in the world who really understands him. Oh, take me to him, won't you? You've got to. Oh, oh tell me everything. Tell me what he said. Tell me what he needs. Well, well, actually, what he needs is Johnny needs some money. Money? A big lug? No, not just money. He need uh, credit cards, VCRs, uh, camcorders, and he's been craving for this Rolex. Well, I suppose I do have a few baubles, a few trinkets, a few shiny souvenirs that may seem meaningless to you, but have brought a handful of happiness to this lonely heart. Hey, hold, on, hold on, this ain't one of them totally hidden video things. Or like that. Oh, Johnny, I remember the day he left us, oh, it was yesterday. He stood right at that door and he said to me, Velma, I'm going out for a dozen roses, a pack of cigarettes, and a quart of gin. Then he slipped me five bucks and told me to buy myself something pretty. I've been waiting here ever since. You don't have that five dollars with you, do you? Oh, take it all. Don't you see? Nothing means anything to me but Johnny. Oh, I miss him so. Oh, Johnny. Oh, oh Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. I'm over, girl. Let it out, girl. Carla, you say what? I'm going to run get some roses and some cigarettes and a quart of gin, and I'll be right back for you, all right? All right, kid. You don't have to spell it out for me. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. Hey, here's five dollars. Go get you some. That's right, kid. Go on without me. It's better that way. I'll only slow you down. Give a message to Johnny for me. Tell him I love him. Tell him I'll wait right here. I'd wait a thousand years. Oh, Johnny. I'd wait forever for you. Don't try to lie, all right? It's all here in black and white. I see, Johnny. War really has changed you, and not for the better. You're battier than a belfry full of bats on a buttered roll. (laughs) 
Is it hot enough? <laughs> hot and creamy. Just the way I like it. <laughs> Can I have just one more cup? That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm sorry. This will be great. Is it, is it uh, hot enough for you? Hot and creamy.